Hey everyone, it's Jenna. Welcome back to my channel where I show you guys how to get that high-end designer look on a budget. In today's video, I'm gonna show you some of my absolute favorite design tips and tricks that I've used throughout my home while decorating it. This is our first home, so it's kind of almost in the done-ish stage, as most of you know. Decorating is never really fully done, but it kind of is getting there. So I'm really excited to kind of just step back and show you guys all of my favorite little tricks and tips that I have implemented throughout different rooms of my space. And these are the things that I just really feel like make a difference really take your room from kind of just like decorated to designer level and I don't know just things that I wish I would have heard before kind of initially setting out to design my space so without further ado let's get into the video okay so one of my favorite tips to keep in mind when designing a space is to always keep function in mind and don't sacrifice it for the look or the aesthetic. I just want everyone to remember that we are designing our spaces for ourselves, not for a magazine. So I'm gonna give you guys a couple examples of how I did this in my own home. So first example is our dog. She loves her dog bed. Like this is where she always is. She wants to be on her dog bed no matter where we are. So, you know, we're in our living room 90% of the time and you know, it would definitely be a designer no-no to put a dog bed in the living room just ruins the aesthetic kind of is distracting but I think that there are ways that we can work around this to make our rooms functional for us so what we did is I actually went to home goods I got a super cute dog bed that fits perfectly into our living room kind of blends in there looks similar to our carpet so it's not too distracting it has a really pretty pattern on it I know I got this one at home goods so it's not linkable but I also found a really cute cheap one on Amazon as well I will link those but you know we put that in our living room and for me was I not gonna put a dog bed in my living room just because I wanted it to look Look nice all the time no I was gonna work around it find something that was aesthetically pleasing that kind of worked into my room but still put that in a nice little space where it fits and our dog loves it and we love that she can you know sit right next to us on the couch and just be with us so um, that's kind of one example of that so another space that I did this in was our little reading nook area in our living room. And I feel like I could have easily, you know, just slapped artwork above it, put a really pretty styling cabinet next to it and called it a day. It would have looked very pretty and very gorgeous, but it just wouldn't have been functional for our family or for our needs. So some things I did to kind of work function in with the aesthetic is I really wanted a little spot to set my coffee. So when I'm reading a book or enjoying a magazine, I can just put it there or if I'm drinking tea in the afternoon, afternoon or just a snack or whatever it's just nice to have a little spot where you can set that down so I found this gorgeous bench on Etsy I will link it below it definitely wasn't cheap but I think it really adds some character to our space and instead of just putting that there I wanted to kind of create a little moment so I layered it with another vintage stool I popped a little planter there with some bunny tails which I think is really cute and just kind of like made it visually pleasing and I just worked that little cup holder area in if that makes sense and then another thing when I was thinking about decor I was like okay what else would I use here I was like you know it'd be really nice to kind of display some blankets somehow and use that into the decor as well and it worked out perfectly because this blanket ladder adds a lot of height and it just kind of contrasts the soft material with that wood there and it's a really pretty place to display blankets and makes it super convenient so when you're sitting there and you're cold or it's raining and you just want to cozy up with your tea in your book or whatever, you can just grab a blanket right there. It's within arm's reach. And then the last thing I thought about was, you know, it would be really nice to kind of display or have some, you know, convenient reading material nearby. And I just popped this really cute magazine holder that I got and it just makes it a really functional, pretty spot. Combined with the blankets, the magazines, and the little spot to put your coffee, there I kind of made the decor pretty, but also everything within that area is super functional. So another spot I did this in was our entryway. We have a really long spot um, against one of our long hallway walls and I could have easily broken that up with like a console table and just kind of styled it really pretty. But I asked myself like, what would be really nice to have in this area that's still decorative? So I thought it'd be super functional to have a spot to put our shoes on, to just sit for a second, put Kona's collar on, wait for the other spouse who is taking longer, whatever. Um, and and then I also thought it'd be useful to have a mirror above it just for any last minute checks before you walk out the door. Um, I wanted it, like I said, to look pretty, but marry 
function and design. So um, that to me was a little bit more useful than just kind of something decorative. So when you're looking at an empty corner or a spot in your room that just needs to be decorated, you know, ask yourself, what would be helpful if I had here? What is something that I would actually use and how can I implement that into my decor to, you know, make it an aesthetically pleasing but yet still functional spot? And once you combine and marry these two elements, function and design, I really think that's when you hit the jackpot and you make your space super enjoyable and you just love being in your space because it's perfect for you. Okay, so my next tip is to incorporate some antique and vintage items into your space. And I've talked about this so many times before on my channel, and that's because I really do think this is a crucial part of really getting that designer look for your space. I know a lot of my favorite designers all do this. They do it in the forms of furniture, old metals, you know, old paintings, vintage artwork, old vessels, old vases, using old primitive wood, stuff like that. I feel like when you incorporate items that tell a story, seem like they have character, have been weathered over time, it really just kind of creates this irreplaceable, whimsical, cozy, lived-in feel that you can't get by buying anything brand new. Um, but with that being said, you wanna mix these old items with the brand new stuff to kind of really create that curated dynamic look to just give your some depth. So um, personally, this is one of the things that I like to do. I think it really makes your home feel expensive, feel cozy, and it's just fun to kind of curate all of these old, chippy, worn, vintage items that you personally love for your own space. All right, so my next tip is to not be afraid of faux greenery. And I get this all the time. A lot of people message me and they say, but Jenna, I was just on a designer's blog and they said, Faux greenery is a no-no. And I'm here to tell you guys that this is 100% a matter of personal preference, what works for you, and it is not bad if you have to resort to faux greenery in your space. I will say, if faux plants bother you and you cringe every time you look at them, then don't put them in your space. But if you feel like real greenery just isn't the answer for you, you don't have the time to do it, it's not practical, and you want plants that may not grow in your climate or in a certain corner of your home properly, then this is a really great solution. There are so many good options out on the market right now, things that you honestly have to touch to see if they're real or not. So, um, you know, I don't think that faux greenery is a bad thing, and I I'm here to encourage you guys to use it throughout your space. And you know, in my home, I personally have done a lot of research to source those greenery items that look really realistic. So I will have a couple linked down below of the favorite ones in my space. So you know, if faux greenery really bothers you, but you also don't wanna be taking care of every plant in your home, dried florals and dried greenery are a really great solution for that. So they are actually real plants, but you don't have to water them or take care of them. The only thing is that they're not super moldable or flexible. So if you're making an arrangement out of them, you kind of just have to work with what you have. Um, whereas faux stems usually are wired and they are very flexible and you can kind of put them in the positions that you like, which can be really important when creating like a little arrangement or something like that. So that is something to keep in mind. Um, I would say it goes faux greenery, then dried florals, and then real plants. And what I personally like to do in my space is I layer all three. So I have probably majority faux greenery. I really like this for trees and larger, you know, pieces just because these are the hardest to take care of. And if you were to invest in one, they'd be the most expensive. And if you kill it, that's sad. <laughs> it's a lot of money down the drain. And then I will do some dried florals. I go heavy on the dried florals during the fall and winter season just because I feel like that really kind of sets the mood properly for autumn or winter. And then I do just have a couple of real plants sprinkled throughout my home. Um, that's just practical and easy for me to take care of. But you know, my overall point of this is to not be afraid of faux greenery. I feel like it can look just as great, sometimes if not better than real greenery. I really do feel like the right kind can elevate your space. And if you feel lost on the right ones, I will have a couple linked below. Okay, so if you're lost on styling, like styling a console table or a coffee table or a countertop or something like that, 
My go-to is always to add some sort of catch-all, a tray, a riser, just something so you know, you're know you able to add a level of intention to your decor. It makes everything look very well organized, very thought out, and it kind of groups items together that would otherwise seem random and makes them look like they all belong. So um, I use this trick all the time. I use it on my countertops, my coffee table, my console table, my bathroom countertops. You know, there's so many different types of materials with trays, risers, catch-alls that even if you utilize this technique throughout your whole entire home, that it would still look very fresh and just make your whole space look very organized. You know, um, there's wood, rattan, leather, metal. There's just so many ways to play around with this design technique. And it can be a way to make other things that would otherwise kind of be an eyesore in your decor look normal and like they belong there. So for example, in our living room, I have a little metal tray with some of our remotes, some coasters, and just like a little floral arrangement in there. And if they were just sitting on my coffee table, it would just kind of look weird and random, not organized, but it gives everything a spot and a purpose and just makes it seem a lot more organized, like it, everything has a spot. So for me, that's really important, especially if you incorporate items that you need in your everyday life, like a remote, but you're not willing to like put it away in a storage box every time you need it. I think that this is a really great solution for that. So yeah, like I said, you're feeling lost, always resort back to a tray, a catch-all, or a wooden riser just to kind of group some items together. And I promise you it'll instantly make your space feel a lot more visually pleasing, intentional, and organized. So another tip I have for you guys is to prop your artwork. This is actually a huge designer trend right now, and what's great about it is it's nothing you have to commit to long term if this becomes weird or random in the future, but I personally really love the look of it. You know, I am a huge fan of gallery walls and hung artwork, but I think that prop artwork is really great for maybe a space where you wouldn't be able to hang a piece of artwork. You know, maybe you have a little space in between the bottom of your TV and a mantle or a countertop or a table or something like that. And a little piece of artwork would just really complete that space and make it feel cozy and intentional. You know, I use this technique in my kitchen. I always just prop a piece of artwork right there. Maybe on a console table, it's really nice to kind of layer artwork or layer a piece of artwork with a mirror. I think that it just looks really beautiful. It's definitely a trending design technique right now. And like I said, you don't have to commit to it. It's something that's easy to change up in the future. And this is also great for those of us who rent and maybe you don't want to put holes in the walls or you know you're leaving in a couple months, but you still just kind of want to dress up your space a little bit. This is a great technique technique to utilize. All right, so my next tip for you guys is to incorporate your favorite colors into your space no matter what the trends are. So, um, you know, trends come and go. Like we've been told all white spaces. Okay, now you must add pumps of contrast in there. Oh, you know, olive green, that was so 70s. Oh, olive green, that's trendy now back again. You know, there's just no keeping up with it. So when you commit to a color, know it can always be changed and you know, just put colors in your space that really make you happy. For me personally, what I like to do in my space is keep everything pretty classic um, as far as my base things that, you know, I'm gonna have for a long time, like my cabinets and my sofa, but things like, you know, pillows and accessories, rugs that get old every couple of years, things like that. I like to have fun with those and switch those up and, you know, you can kind of play with your color scheme that way. I personally really love blue and orange combo because they are complementary colors on the color wheel. It's very pleasing to the eye, so I don't like to go all the way blue and orange like you know, the Florida Gators, which that is my college, but I wouldn't want to go like that crazy. But when you have those tones and you kind of mute them down, I think that it looks really pretty. So a navy blue, which is a very muted blue combined with kind of like a cognac leather orangey color, which is what we have for our pillows. Um, I think that that just looks really beautiful and it's kind of unique. Not everybody has that color combo in their space. Gives your eye a little bit of variety with our neutral space it just kind of gives your eyes some fun colors to land on without being too crazy um, obviously color is very personal and I know that so what I do think looks very designer no matter the color is just keeping it 
in small portions. If you know you add a couple of pillows of your favorite teal blue or whatever, and then you look at the room and you think, you know, this isn't enough teal for me, I wanna add more, you can go from there. Add it in with your artwork, add an accent wall, things like that. Um, but you know, if you look at it and you say, you know what, this is enough teal for my space, I think I'm done, then you can stop there. And it makes it really easy to build on your color or just dial it back. So my advice would be to keep the main structure and bones of your home neutral, and then you can add in different punches of color and it makes it really easy to switch things up as you get bored of it or as the season change or whatever just add some versatility into your space all right you guys so that kind of wraps up this video I hope you enjoy just hearing some of my favorite tips and tricks that I like to use here and there throughout my space and are kind of the pillars for what I look for when I start designing a room so hopefully this can give you guys kind of a fun base to build on when designing and decorating your spaces um, I just want to thank you all so much for your kind support on my channel I seriously cannot believe that my channel is where it is um, for those of you who don't know I got furloughed from my airline job uh, not even a year ago and I started this because it was something that I was passionate about and you guys seriously all of your support and kindness just really means so much to me and you are the reason that this channel is where it is today so thank you guys and I will see you all in my next video bye